can't buy It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. And, you know, Andrew, I love talking about not just the journey, but like actually just some of the bumps in the road, because we always hear about people coming out the other side. So people can check out other episodes like Julie Clark, who started Baby Einstein. Um, She grew it with five employees to $20 million, sold to Disney. But the most interesting part was she... Um, survived cancer twice. She calls herself the cancer assassin. Um, and that's real life. Like, you know, there's stuff that happens in our personal life that overlays with business. And she shared some of those stories. Kim Walsh Phillips has, you know, started an amazing company um, as far, you know, as far as helping other companies on social media and paid ads. But she talked about at one point in the career, she had to sell her wedding ring to make payroll. So um, I think she got it back eventually from the pawn shop. But um, that and many more, check out inspiredinsider.com for other episodes. This episode is brought to you by Rise25. Rise25, I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. We help businesses connect to their Dream 100 clients, referral partners, relationships. You know, kind of like, I'm going to introduce Andrea Herrera in a second, but kind of like Andrea, how do you give to your best relationships? And that's kind of how I think on a daily basis. How do I give? And I feel like when I have a podcast, I can have someone profile their thought leadership, spread the message of their company and allows me to give to them. And so um, we do that for other companies. We help launch and run businesses podcasts for them. Um, and so you could check it out. You can, you know, rise25.com. I, my co-founder and I, we are bantering like an old married couple uh, in a video on the homepage. So you can check it out. Um, and if you have questions, you could email us anytime, support at rise25media.com. Uh, I am super excited to introduce today's guest. And big thank you to Fran Biederman Gross uh, for introducing today's guest. And you can check her out at advantages.net where they do end-to-end communications for companies. Um, Andrew Herrera is president and founder of both Amazing Edibles Gourmet Catering and Box Experience. One of my favorite topics is how do you give to people and send actual lumpy mail. So they open it and give them a wow experience. And that's exactly what Andrea does. Box experience builds rapport, shares your gratitude, deepens your most important relationships, and they provide it for top salespeople, CEOs to maintain and develop their most important business relationships. So they do customized wood crates filled with premium food, beverages, monogram gifts. I don't know, Andrea, if you want to hold it up for a second um, while, while I'm talking about it, but she's going to grab it. So if you're watching the video and not just listening to it, she's going to show how cool it looks. It looks amazing. I mean, when I was doing research on this, I'm like, it says, let's connect if you're just listening to it. And it's got some wine and some other goodies in there. Um, I'm like, I'm definitely going to buy them for some other people for sure. There's another one. Um, so we have some wine, some cheese, some meats and other things in there. So, um, it, it looks amazing. And this is her background. Amazing edibles, gourmet catering does catering for weddings, corporate and educational markets. So some of their past clients include fortune 500 companies, nonprofits, you know, includes Oprah Winfrey's Harpo studios, university of Chicago, university of Illinois, Northwestern, Michigan state, Cornell college, and many more. So if you have a fabulous party that you want to execute on, um, that's what they do. They go to homes, offices, you go to cateramazing.com. Um, we will talk and do some shout outs to EO app dynamics and healthplex specifically. So Andrea, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me, Jeremy. I'm really excited to be here. You know, what's most impressive, and we'll talk about your background, because I don't, I really want to dig into what's interesting in your past is English art history and music history major to running your own company for over 25 years. And in this climate, um, you know, cater amazing, but Box Experience is younger, you know, comparatively. But um, talk about, you know, embracing change. And starting up by experience and how that process started up. Sure, thank you. Um, so I studied English, art history, music history in college. Um, went to a small liberal arts college that was on a block plan. So we did a different class every three and a half weeks. Hmm. So there was constant change, constant motion. You had to be really adaptable. Um, I worked in corporate um, restaurants for about 10 years after college. Got to yeah. a general manager level. Um, 
Yeah, the Levy organization is huge in Chicago. The Levy organization, yes, and they're across the country. Um, at the time, there were lots of restaurants. They moved into stadiums. Um, but at the I think end, they're all like Bulls Stadium. Like that's they cater all the food there. So like boxes, you cut your your teeth on like the probably the most difficult, most comprehensive as far as catering goes. Um, it was a great learning space. I always, when I talk to um, wannabe entrepreneurs, I tell them, go work for the best in the industry, yeah. learn on their dime, <laughs> totally. get your experience, and then go off and learn on your own. So after 10 years, I had kind of burnt out, quit my job, rode a motorcycle cross country, <laughs> by the pool for the summer, um, and decided if I was going to work that hard, I should do it for myself. And thus was born Amazing Edibles. Um, so we've done, we foster relationship building at bread breaking events. We've done it for 25 years. Um, I have an amazing team. I have a 5,000 square foot kitchen. We do cooking classes. We do events at venues around the city on people's homes. And uh, in the last three months, things have slowed down a little bit. Um, the fact that you can't get more than 10 people together, at least as of today in the Chicago area, means our event business is basically hibernating. Um, I like that word, hibernating. That's like a very positive, positive word. <laughs> Thank you. We're doing meals, family meal service. We're doing first responder meals. We have done some work for social service agencies, and we are working with a lot of our couples who have been postponing weddings. Our first wedding is actually July 2nd. We're super excited about. Mm. Um, but that business um, is on a serious slowdown. We're down about 90% in revenue. So... Um, March 13th, I laid off about 80% of my team. Huh. And a few weeks later, reached out to a bunch of amazing entrepreneurs um, I know through EO and around uh, my business experience and uh, was told you need a startup in the next 30 days. So I jumped in. Um, my, my purpose in life is to foster connection to create community. And I tried to look at the resources I had with Amazing Edibles, which is food and drink and connection and celebration. And how could I bring that to people without the events? And um, I also saw that for a lot of salespeople, CEOs, the lunches that they took people out to and the dinners and the Bulls games um, are not gone. happening. Gone. Yeah. Yes, gone. Um, and so how could I replace that with a shared experience? And uh, thus came Boxperience. I have... Um, a lot of experience with food and beverages. So I've been curating these cool things, but I wanted it to be personal. It's more than a gift box. Like how do we unbox the gift box? So the idea is you're sharing, instead of going to lunch, you're gonna send this risotto Italian meal with wine and risotto and cheese and a personalized video or audio card that they open up and they see your face saying, hey, even though we can't have lunch this Friday, let's meet over Zoom, crack open the bottle of wine and catch up or a cup of coffee if you prefer coffee, but a lot of them include refreshing beverages. Um, and so I jumped in and uh, it took us three weeks um, from deciding to open to launch. And we're now four weeks in and we have sold around 300 um, boxes, which was really fast. Um, I want more, um, but it was a, um, a quick jump and leap. I didn't feel I had any other choice. Um, I have a company, I have a team, and for us to move forward, I needed multiple streams of revenue. So, so how did you come up with the name and decide to go with this route? Because you could have gone a lot of routes. You'd be like, well, we could just focus all in on delivery, you know, like just delivering food. And that's, that's a huge need right now too. Yes. Right? Um, so I worked with my leadership team. I laid off a lot of my staff, but we kept our leadership team and we did some whiteboard sessions and had everybody come up with every idea they had for what we could do. Should we do concierge dinner service? Should we do concierge grocery service? People it takes three weeks to get groceries from Whole Foods two months ago. Um, nobody wants to go to a grocery store because you might get cooties. Um, all these things. <laughs> um, and so we looked, I looked at starting summer camps, virtual summer camps, because people are going to need to do stuff with their kids because after three months of homeschooling, people are ready to kill them. So Talk, try two days of homeschooling. There you go. Yeah. So we, we threw a million, you know, ideas at the wall. And again, looking at what resources we have, a 5,000 square foot kitchen, who are our connections, community services, universities, schools, corporate, um, couples. Um, and I also felt like I needed a business. Um, this is going to sound really bad, but I'm just going to say it. That would cater to the 
because honestly, I need people who have money to buy. They have to pay for the services. They have to pay for the services. So I was looking for a business that was probably a little bit more high end, um, but for people who still have revenue and resources and can employ it differently. Um, and so I came up with this as a way for salespeople who have budgets for travel and entertaining to have another way to connect with that client that they're not currently. Um, one of my thoughts is if someone's spending $100,000 a year with you in your business, you can't really send them a box of oranges. Fruit of the month is lovely, <laughs> but a $50 box of oranges doesn't quite match the value of the relationship. Yeah. Um, you also can't send them an iPad because it kind of looks like a bribe. So can we do something in between? Can we do something that's thoughtful, that's meaningful, that replaces that experience and encourage them to share it together? So as a salesperson, instead of calling people, which for the most part is not terribly welcome these days, um, can you get your client to pick up their phone and call you um, and connect and connect deeply? And they're going to remember you because the breadboard or the Moscow Mule mugs are going to be sitting in their house because they've got their name on them. Not your name. Nobody really wants to to wear a box experience t-shirt, but if it's got their name I on do. It, I'd wear a box experience t-shirt and a sweatshirt. I will get a box experience t-shirt. Sure. People send me their sweatshirts, Andrea, and I wear them like and on a daily them. basis. I should have one for you. Okay. <laughs> I'll get it on um, the list. You know, who, so who's ideal for you to be using you right now? Like who have you found like, oh, we love this, you know, more of those type of people or sure. companies? Um, you know what, I'm gonna go back because you asked me how I came up with the name and Fran Biederman Gross and Advantages um, helped me launch this company nice. um, doing the branding. So they came up with ideas. I came up with ideas. We smushed them together. We worked virtually. Um, and they were incredibly instrumental in helping us launch in three weeks. Um, nice. How do you know Fran? Uh, through EO. We have been friends for about 11 years. Um, she did um, her Y workshop um, around purpose for EO in Chicago about 11 years ago. I was wow. present in the room and incredibly impressed. And uh, we're very active and involved in the women of EO, which EO is the entrepreneurs organization. Um, we've both been very involved and, and kicked off the first summit in Aspen five years ago. And so our lives have kind of circled around. We're in different cities, we do different things. Um, but as I was figuring out what to do, we got on a call one Sunday morning and um, she knew everything I needed. <laughs> Uh, and she had the team and the resources to do it. And so we worked really fast and, um, and launched in a month. So I'm sorry. I know I. Yeah. So what, tell me in that, in that four week period, what did you have to get done and what did you have to prepare with your team, with Fran? Sure. Um, so we had to come up with a name for the company. We had to come up with a website. We had to come up with the products we had to come up with a source for boxes that are made in Idaho and then hand branded for us. We had to come up with the contents for the boxes. I had to figure out licensing because I was moving super fast and it was like, okay, well, let's get the box. Let's do this. And then I'll worry about it. And you know what? It's almost impossible to send liquor around the country. There are archaic liquor license laws and it's almost impossible. But I was about two weeks in before I figured that out. So we switched to wine because wine, I have a um, distributor that can ship wine all over the country. So we have boxes that have liquor available that are, um, that we can distribute to the Chicago area because I have a food and liquor license here in Chicago. And then I have boxes that can go all over the country that have wine or non-alcoholic items. And you're showing some of them now. Thank you. Awesome. Um, so figuring out the boxes and the contents, figuring out the website, figuring out order forms and business cards and letterhead and who is our client and what are the objections and how much should they cost and um, where are we going to put What are out? some of the objections? The objections, they're too expensive. Hmm. I already do that. So they're too expensive. To me, if your client, if you would take your client to lunch and spend 200 bucks, this is a $200 gift that's the same and you're going to share the same hmm. experience with them. Um, we already do that. What most companies do is send something with their name on it, a yeah. cool water bottle, a Yeti bottle. Cool, cool. But again, it doesn't feel that personal. So this is something that is not really replacing a gift box. <laughs> it's replacing that shared experience. Mm -hmm. um, those are probably two of the top ones. 
Um, and one of the biggest challenge has been for me that it takes educating the client about what it is because otherwise they look at it and say gift box. And it's like, no, it's not a gift box. I mean, it is a gift box, but it is ideally more than a gift box because it's an experience. Yeah, it's personalized. Yes. Also. Because a lot of personalized stuff is kind Gift of boxes aren't typically personalized at all. Right. And it sounds like there's some lasting components, not just the food, but there's some lasting components in the box too. Talk right. about some of, of that. Like you mentioned sure. the glasses. And yes, in this Italian box, there's a beautiful wooden marble cheese board. Voila. And so it nice. has a family name on it. So what's going to happen is someone's going to throw this in their kitchen and every time they see it, they're going to think of you. Yeah. It doesn't have to have rise 25 on it. Right. But nope. when they see it, they say, Jeremy sent me this cool thing way better than, totally. than an advertisement. So this is a gift, not an advertisement. John Rulin of giftology, who you may have heard of. I believe he has been. I know John. Yep. So um, he and I have spoken and I've followed him for years. And so a lot of my philosophy is the same. This yep. is a present. It's not an advertisement. Yeah. This is something saying I value you and that's it. There's no, you don't have to give me anything back for it. It's just simply, I appreciate you. Yeah. Um, so he would just come fly to Chicago and put me in a headlock if I sent something with our name on it. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> to so that is exactly how it works. Yes. Um, so I am a proponent of that, but that takes a little education because for the most part, company owners are used to let me get my name on everything. So everybody knows who I am Yeah. and your client knows who you are. They spend a hundred thousand dollars a year with you. They, they know who you are. <laughs> so that was a good example. I like that. She's what other things, um, can people think about getting or customizing within sure. your, um, your boxes? We have like copper mugs. And so we would put your initials and perhaps your partner's initials. So it's really cool hmm. if it's yours. It's even cooler if it's yours and your spouse's because now you included again in John Rulin terms, inner circle, like you who are the big business person who is always getting wined and dined and taken to Gibson's for lunch and Alinea for dinner, like no big deal that someone sends you a box. But if we send something and it also has your husband's name on it, cause he's at home taking care of the kids and he doesn't get wined and dined all the time. But all of a sudden, this box you open, you deliver to someone's home. So they're opening it home. And there's something for both of us. There's food and drink that we can share. There's, um, it, it goes really well. Um, we've been doing these now for about a month. And so I've got box experience videos up on LinkedIn and Facebook and all over the place and of people opening it with their kids and opening it with their spouse. And kind of that surprise and delight factor is big. So we also have corksical mugs, um, like the metal cups for champagne flutes for being set with Prosecco. We have mugs, we have a branding iron, we have a grill barbecue box. So who doesn't want to put their last initial, you know, their initial, their last name on their steak or their burger when they're uh, barbecuing. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. There's just fun things. They're not a million dollar gift, right? But it's something that's kind of thoughtful and special because it's personalized to you. Yeah. Um, again, we're not trying to pay anybody off with this. It's just something that's going to cause some surprise and delight today and hopefully be left behind and remembered later. You mentioned, um, and I want to talk about, you sent out these influencer boxers. So we'll talk about that. But um, you mentioned price point and I feel like the sky's the limit. It's like a blank slate. People could do anything and customize this. What's the range, would you say, where would it start? Should, you know, like, okay, I want to send like 10 of these. What's like, would be the starting price to think about? And then it probably goes on up from there. Awesome question. Uh, all the boxes are two fifteen a piece mm -hmm. plus tax and shipping. We have $20 flat rate shipping around the US. Um, and then if you buy five or more, they go down to 185. That includes a handwritten or audio card. So when they open it, there is your message in your voice, which everybody knows, Jeremy, because you are on podcasts all over the world. Um, like 10 people who listen, yes. But yeah. Oh, <laughs> I know John Rowland's going to watch this one. Yes, um, he definitely will. He's been mentioned six times now. Um, <laughs> and then, or a video card. And the video card's an extra 50 bucks. Okay. Um, so basically 200 to $250 kind of out the door. Now, yes, if you want a bottle of Dom in this box, I am happy to include that. We are doing custom boxes. I have found that people want custom. We're working with someone for kind of a virtual trade show that's doing a virtual conference. 
and doing basically a goodie bag because all the sponsors can't get their stuff to people now. So we'll put in some food and drink on a smaller basis, but then have room for, for swag um, from a conference. We're doing them for HR groups for onboarding C-level executives. So you can do something with the company name on it, something with their name, and then some company treasures and paperwork and stuff that need to get out. So I'm finding that there's application that way. High-end realtors are using them as gifts when someone buys their condo or home. Um, so talk about the 40 influencer boxes. Okay, so um, I wanted to get some feedback and find out like if this was a great idea in my head <laughs> or yeah. if it could have some, some actual application. So I sent them around the country to people like John Rulin and John Spence and Dave Rendell and lots of kind of speakers and leadership influencers. I've, I've hosted leadership conferences for EO, so I know lots of really cool people that do interesting things. Um, I sent it to entrepreneur friends. I sent it to people kind of in my target markets to open them up and see if they worked. And, um, and it was super enlightening. Um, I didn't warn people they were coming, so they didn't know what they were getting. So I got lots of surprise and delight. I also realized- You wanted the real reaction. Yeah. I wanted a real reaction because I'm going all in. Um, what do you like send them, Angela, like the first initial outreach to get their information? Because some of them, I imagine you didn't have it. What do you say it without tipping them off that you're sending them something? So, well, I said, I, um, you know, we've worked together before. I have a new company. I'd like to send you something and get your impression of it. Can I have your home address? And everybody gave it to Got me, it. no problem. Um, as I said, connection super important to me. So while these folks aren't my best friends, they've spoken at conferences and such for me. So they weren't scared that I was coming to see yeah, so you're right. <laughs> their address. Um, and so I sent these around and one of my friends um, who owns a company, a staffing service, Anthony Ramirez, uh, opened it and uh, Lincoln Security. Um, and he, um, loved it. And he did a LinkedIn post the next morning. And I have to tell you, I could not have done a better job if Fran and Advantages had done this post. Beautiful picture, awesome words. Um, and he is pretty um, active on LinkedIn. And two hours later, I got my first call. Hmm. And someone wanted to order the boxes and they were not friends and family. It's one thing like your friends and family have to support you and have to buy a box to send somebody but this was someone who had never heard of me and he wasn't an EO member and he just saw it and thought it would be good to connect with his clients. And so it felt like that first little possibility of maybe I have something here, maybe, yeah. maybe beyond my head, <laughs> this could have some legs. So that was, that was my favorite. Uh, what were some of the other reactions or conversations after they got the box? Um, so people are excited about it. Um, most people didn't notice the initials on the monogrammed mugs because they're copper mugs and unless you hold them up in the light or they didn't notice that they had both couples initials. So I had to point that out. So we ended up figuring out there needed to be a content card so that they'd look for it. Um, the box lid is reversible. So it has a call to action and then a last name, or this is a sample of our father's day lid. Um, but you slid it off the mud, off the table, and I'm like, oh, and then they'll look and see their name. But they weren't seeing their name. Somebody else saw it later when they picked it up to close it. So I was realizing, I think it's super cool because now it becomes the holder for your kids' matchbox cards or your garden tools in the in the garage. And again, every time they- That's what I was going to say, because it looks like something you can reuse. Yes. So the box is nice enough that you would keep it as a keepsake. And again, it's a reminder. Um, so yeah, so some of the personalization wasn't being noticed right off. So we ended up putting in a contents card. So they understood that I didn't put my business card. So if they wanted to order some, I didn't have a piece in there for them to call me and say, yes. Let me <laughs> um, another thing I realized was I said, well, this is kind of a pricey gift and I need initials. I need your client's home address. This is all going to be a relationship based business. They're going to call us on the phone. You know what? People don't want to call you on the phone. They want to click on your website and buy something. Even if they're buying 40 of them, HealthFlex is buying 40 of them to send to, to clients around the country. They want to be able to order online. And that was a big miss on my part. So our website, as we speak, is being optimized to add e-commerce. Um, mm. You don't know what you don't know. And I went really, really fast, which was great. Yeah. I think it was important and I needed to. 
but there were a few steps that I made educated guesses with the information I had at the time, and some of them were right, and some of them were a little bit off. So we are- I mean, the important part is like, you are always seeking feedback from your colleagues, your peers, but also from actual potential customers or actual current customers, because they're going to give you the real feedback. Yes. Um, and, th- and that's been great because as we started sending them out for customers, you know, checking in with the client and saying, did your customer call you? Like, did it work? <laughs> were they happy? One of my clients said two customers called because their wives were at home and opened the boxes mm. and were so excited and said, like, you have to work with this person. This is so cool. Um, so it was fun kind of hearing how people are experiencing them and then obviously seeing some online when people are opening them and and having fun with it. So, yeah, so we learned a few things from that first batch and we made some improvements. We put some more things in the box to help explain things if they didn't get it. Um, we wrote scripts. So if you buy these and you are going to your audio video, we have six scripts that you can use. You can customize it and do whatever you want, but people are nervous. By the time they do the six or eight, they get pretty practiced. Mm. Um, but just making it easy for people to buy, making it easy for people to see how this works. And now we're starting to get a few reorders, which is exciting. In a short period of time, that's amazing. Talk about uh, EO as an influence to your business and you know, in general you know, over the years. I love EO. So EO is the entrepreneur's organization. We have 15,000 members um, around the world. Um, I got involved about 11 years ago in what was called our accelerator program, which helped businesses that were at a quarter of a million to 750,000 accelerate their growth up over a million. Uh, I was in the program for about 18 months. I drank the Kool-Aid um, and uh, joined EO. Uh, end of the year, it was like December 23rd. We were about to cr- close for the winter holiday and added up all my revenue and we just crossed the 1 million. And I opened a bottle of champagne with my chefs in the kitchen and was so excited. Um, EO helped me course correct. I had run my own company for 12 years. I don't wanna say it was a lifestyle business, but I had a small kid, I worked, and we just kind of kept going. And I didn't really set big goals for myself, BHAGs, or, or I didn't look far into the- When you have a small, and it was a small kid, you're trying to survive. I mean, <laughs> like- <laughs> And, yeah. I had a, and I've had a great life. And my son went to school here in Chicago and we like to travel, but I wasn't really, um, I wasn't very goal oriented. I wasn't looking very far into the future. I was looking at today. I was working, we would say in my business as opposed to on my business. And so Accelerator and EO helped me look up and look out. And all of a sudden I was in this group of amazing entrepreneurs that were doing such cool things and wanted to help me just because I needed some help and was not afraid to ask and admit I didn't know everything. Um, And so I got involved immediately. I was in leadership for about five years in the Chicago chapter. I uh, did learning events and I ran the accelerator program and I ran what's called our forum, which are small groups that um, experience, share and help an informal board of advisors essentially. I was then president of our chapter. I then held a conference on leadership, on revealing a leader that would define your legacy and had amazing speakers from all over the world here and about 500 people in Chicago for four days. It rocked my world. Um, And then I got involved in global leadership. I've been very um, instrumental in helping develop women leaders in EO. EO is about 85% men. Um, To join EO, you have to do at least a million in annual revenue. Women have a lot of small businesses. They often don't have businesses that scale up over a million dollars. So um, it's been really exciting to help um, encourage diversity in our organization yeah. and diversity in our leadership. Who are some of the EO women members that people should check out their businesses and what they're doing? Uh, Fran Biederman Gross of Advantages in New York City. Uh, Laura Webb in Web Insurance uh, in Tampa. Uh, Marsha Rawls in uh, Washington, D.C. has an art business. Um, gosh. Uh, Do you know Andrea Houston? Art Twin Engines in Houston, also marketing and branding. Um, Do you know Andrea Houston? I do know Andrea Houston. Okay. Is she well, give, on your on your Of website? course she has. Yeah, Andrea Houston's amazing. There's just, there's 2,000 women in EO around the world. Um, doing incredible things. And so it's been super exciting. Um, I've been in global leadership for the last five years. I was just um, named the champion for women of EO 
And so this next year, I will spend my time connecting and developing and uh, creating opportunities uh, for women in our organization and hopefully increasing uh, in retention and uh, recruitment of women into our organization. So I'm super yeah. excited about that. Yeah. So, you know, Andrea Houston has a great podcast and she also wrote Artist Who's Design, I, you know, Lead Like a Woman show. Um, what's your advice, Andrea, for um, young female business leaders, entrepreneurs, um, now that you've been at this for a couple decades? Thank you. Decades. God, make me sound old. Um, Experienced. Okay. Experienced. Yeah. <laughs> Tenured, whatever. <laughs> I am old. That's okay. Um, find people, find your tribe, um, whether it's a group like EO or Vistage or the Women's Presidents Organization or a group from your college or your neighborhood or your incubator. I think very often we think we have to go this road alone. Um, and there are men and women that want to help support all entrepreneurs. And some of my mentors and best, some of my best friends in EO are men. I like men. I like women. Lots of amazing people anywhere, everywhere. Um, I'd say ask for help. Look at the communities that you're part of. You've got to carry your own bags. You have to ask for help. You have to give help. You have to be someone who is ready to help and support others. Very big on servant leadership. I've done lots of mentoring. I serve on boards. I'm chair of the Rivendell Theater Ensemble in Chicago. I think if you jump in and you give of yourself and you show up with an open heart, um, people respond. Um, this business pivot was really fast and I had so many people who have helped me, have introduced me to people who gave me ideas about sales and marketing and introductions. Um, you don't have to do this alone. That would be my, I guess, biggest thing. Ask for help, look for friends. I want to know, um, you know, like we mentioned the Levy organization, you really had a lot of experience with that. What's some... Um, um, aspects you learn from maybe an individual there or the organization that kind of you still think back on? Sure. Um, at the time, um, I had worked for them for a few years, left and done other things, and went back as a general manager running the restaurants and bars at the Goodman Theater. At the time, 27 years ago, um, that was their first cultural institution and foray into, now they have Ravinia and Lincoln Park Zoo and do stuff all over the place. Um, but for them, it was kind of a, a new opportunity. And so I was not 30 years old and they gave me this jewel to take care of, but they gave me also this back end support and there's marketing people and there's accounting people. So it was an incredible training for an entrepreneur because I really got to make all the decisions myself, but I had all this bankroll behind me <laughs> experience that I could lean on. Um, so I really appreciated the trust they put in me and the support they gave me to do a good job. Um, Larry Levy and Mark and um, who are the owners, founders of the company, but just lots of people who showed up and were around and I had an amazing team. I was at the theater for almost 10 years and it was wonderful to be in an arts organization. You talked about my background. Yeah. I graduated from college. I wanted to run the Art Institute. I went there. Ah. The job, you know, to run the Art Institute, and it was already taken. So it was kind of cool 10 years later to be back in that building. And uh, it was like a perfect mix of your experience. It was. I've been really fortunate. Um, you know, I believe things work out. I believe in karma. I, I believe some of that woo woo stuff. I've done a lot of personal development work. Um, and I think as hard as this time is right now, pandemic world has been a very challenging world for my business. Um, I also see silver linings. I see people like Warren Rustan, who in our entrepreneurial world, in EO world, is an amazing uh, giant and lead, uh, leadership dean of our leadership academy, um, who has supported me, who I called for help when I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. There's just so... There's so much good in the world and good around us if you open your eyes and open up to it. Um, yeah. You mentioned, Andrea, you know, resources, you know, from organizations like EO and some of those other ones. Um, I wonder if you have any recommendations as far as uh, resources like books or audio that you think people should check out, like some of your favorites. Um, oh, gosh. Um, if you're starting up, it's e -Myth, right, by Michael Gerber. Um, I think 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss and his new um, Tools of Titans, 
are really good just for mindset. Most of us don't have businesses that we can work only four hours a week, even in that idealized version. But the idea that you don't have to work 100 hours a week, I think is really important. When my company was small, I started at five in the morning and I went till 10 at night and didn't sleep. And you don't have you know, to- Catering and all those, when you're doing events, it's like nights and weekends is the busiest, but you have to prep the whole day for those nights and weekends. Yes, um, but you have to have a life too. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs get lost in the work part um, and give up the lifestyle part. And, and I did. I mean, I raised a small child doing this and we're very close, but I missed things. And so some of it I had to, right? It's a financial job. If wedding is Saturday, you have to be there Saturday. But I think it's also, I'm really grateful that in the last 10 years in my EO world, um, I learned to prioritize things in addition to work. Uh, the other book I love is Michael Singer, um, The Untethered Soul. And so that is not strictly business, but I think it's an amazing personal development book. I, I read it like 10 years ago and it didn't hit me at all. <laughs> I missed it. I picked it up three years ago and it was like singing to my heart. Mm. So I think a lot of these business books, Good to Great by Jim Collins. I mean, there's, there's literally 10 million business books out there. Um, Fran has a new one out, The Three Keys, um, you know, Delivering on Purpose. Um, my friend Winnie has one about standing out and how do you make yourself stand out in the world? Um, there's, there's so much out yeah, there. Yeah, I've had several entrepreneurs actually recommend The Untethered Soul. So it's, it's, if, have you not read it yet? No, I haven't. You got to read it. Okay. Yeah, it, I just wrote it down. It's on my list now. Okay. Um, one, one tiny bit from that book. Yeah. I know out of time. Um, no, go ahead. It taught, there's a lot about presence in the book. And you know how you get something in your head and you just can't get it out of your head. It's all you can think about. Pandemic world, right? It's am I going to get sick? Is it this? Is it that? I was driving down the road listening to it. And it was talking about if you're driving and you see trees on the side of the road, right? You see them. They're there. They're lovely. They're brown. They're green. They're whatever they are. But then you drive past them and they're gone. And you don't have to hold that forever. That thought can disappear. And I may not be saying this exactly right, but it was huge because if you're perseverating on something, something's making you crazy and you can't let it go, you can. Like you actually can. Just like that tree disappears from your thought, you don't have to stay in some negative place getting crazy. You can, you can address it and see it and acknowledge it and then move forward. So for me, that kind of work has been really important. Um, Anyway, yeah. yeah Thanks for sharing that. that. Yeah. So it takes me like seven times, seven times for people to tell me before I actually do it. So this is probably like the ninth. Yeah, exactly. Um, Andrea, first of all, I totally appreciate you sharing your story and your expertise. Um, I have two last questions, but I want to point people towards cateramazing.com. They should check it out. Um, yes. Now, do you do, um, if it's, in Illinois, Chicago, do you do outside in, in other places, Wisconsin, or how far out do you go? Sure. So right now in Chicago, starting Friday, you can have events of up to 50 people. Um, so breakfast, lunch, dinner, parties in people's yards, at venues, um, we can do in the Chicagoland area. Um, generally, we have done things in, we've got a, a party in July in Indiana. I've done parties up at Lake Geneva, in New Buffalo. I would say within two hours, if you've got a summer home somewhere and you want to have a fabulous celebration this summer, we would be happy to bring a team and food and throw your party. Um, Sounds great. Wedding, social, um, whole shebang. So yes, thank you. I'm here. 312-563-1600. You can find me at cateramazing.com. We'll link it up on the website. Yeah, cateramazing.com. And then boxperience.net. Um, people could check that out. And... Anything to point out on that? Um, there are about a dozen boxes listed there. We have added a half dozen more that we, the photo shoot is next week, so we don't have. But um, it's if you want to do something special for someone, if you want to connect in a more significant way, um, I think it's a really lovely um, way to do that. We're happy to customize things for different industries. Um, and we're super nice people, so we'll take really good care of you. I love it. And uh, I mean, I, I make it a practice at least every month sending someone something in the mail. You know, we're used to getting emails, texts, but getting something physical in the mail is just a totally different experience. And obviously something cool like, like these 
these boxes. I, I agree. You talked about lumpy mail. I, yeah. we still write handwritten thank you notes to everybody, um, which is kind of an old school thing, but, but there's something about holding something, sorry, holding something in your hand um, that I think has a very real, um, it's a physical thing. Emails are lovely. I love getting lovely notes by email. But there's something about opening a card, about opening a gift that takes you outside of that and kind of brings you right back to the present. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Totally. So check it out, cateramazing.com, boxperience.net. Um, last two questions, Andrea. Um, I always ask since Inspired Insider, what's been a low moment, challenging point that you had to push through? And then on the flip side, what's been a proud moment for you? Um, you know, it's like the overnight success after. 10, 20 years. What's been a, a challenging moment, low moment that you had to kind of push through? Sure. Um, so I have a 5,000 square foot kitchen at 14th and Western, west of the West Loop area. And I bought it 11 years ago. And we had outgrown our kitchen on Chicago Avenue in the Ukrainian village. And I was super excited. We're building it out. I'm designing it. It's going to be amazing. It's five times the size of our old space. We're going to be in in November in time for holiday season. So I'm doing triple the business. I'm taking all this work like crazy. And I had an evil contractor who ripped me off and did fake waivers of lean and, and wasn't finished on time. And I would get up in the morning and I'd throw up. And then I would go to my old space where work was happening. And then I'd come to the new space where nothing was happening. And then I'd go back and do my work day. And I did that for about two months until I fired the contractor when I figured out he was never going to finish um, and had a really, really hard holiday and, and New Year's. And then I called 20 people and we came in for a weekend and finished all the stuff he didn't finish. And we opened. Wow. And um, we were in this beautiful space that despite real terrible contractor and build out experience, has good juju. We have light, skylights and sunshine and, and it worked. And I was really nervous. Um, and this will roll into the positive thing. I'm this little caterer and you know, I don't know, how are we going to do this? I'm going to triple my overhead. So I'll just triple my revenue. That was pretty much my business plan. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, and was trying stuff. And all of a sudden someone introduced me um, one of our staff worked at Harpo Studios, which was Oprah's studio, and they were looking for a new caterer. So like, okay, well, will you come do a tasting? And I was terrified. I said yes, and I was terrified because like this was for Oprah. And who are we? And they're going to figure out. I'm faux, right? Sheryl Sandberg, Fo, like, we're going to get so busted. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing going there. Um, they liked our food. They liked me. They liked me. I feel like Sally Field. Um, <laughs> that sounded like her actually. Yeah. And, and they hired us. And yeah. so what, what did you present at the tasting? Do you remember? Everything. Um, yeah. chicken and steak and vegetables and salads and pasta. I mean, we had like two six foot tables piled up with food, probably food for a hundred people. Um, and we then started doing dinner three nights a week for her team, which was a hundred people. Mm. And it was Cajun one night and French the next night, and Italian the next night. And so we got to be really creative with menus. Um, it was regular, consistent business, which was really important for a small business because, oh, the other part of this, this was 2009. So I bought this new space and decided to triple my revenue, you know, the week the financial crisis hit. I closed right. the property. Mm. It was really good. Um, but all of a sudden it started working. And once mm. I had Oprah... Once I had Oprah Winfrey in my pocket, um, things started opening up. This was the same time that I was getting more involved in EO. And all of a sudden I was on MSNBC and I was on CNN and I was getting press and I was in USA Today and everything started building on everything. Um, and so it just takes like one door opening. It takes one little confidence boost to kind of, for me, to make me ready to step into everything else. And it's been great. I feel like your good luck charm is the economy downturn, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> 2008, that's boom, that's COVID, boom. So this well, is the next, this is the work. next boom for you. I think you're right. So uh, you that out. I will remember that. <laughs> everyone check out boxperience.net, check out cateramazing.com. Andrea, I totally appreciate you having, you know, you coming on and, and sharing your experience. 
Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, Jeremy. I look forward to catching up soon. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. 